What's up, guys? Ryan from Elevate Cyber here with a quick video to help you guys out. Uh, this is what you need to know for OSCP covering LFIs this time. Uh, we're going to keep this very simple and condense down what you need to know, and I will be giving you a little bit of extra you know, bonuses here at the end. But, uh, you know, pretty much all the servers you're going to encounter are going to be either Unix-based or Windows-based. And, uh, you know, here's where doing your recon comes into play when you're running your NMAP scans or maybe even just uh, browsing around on the website might give you a clue as to whether the underlying operating system is uh, a Unix-based one or Windows. If it is uh, Unix, then using the base URL and then adding a dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Uh, normally, you need to do this about, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Uh, because, and the reason I'm, I'm doing this seven times before I go to Etsy password is normally, uh, and especially for the CTFs, a lot of times you're going to be in var www data uh, HTML or something like that. And uh, you might be in some subfolder. And and so on and so on, right? So you have to go back. Even if you're like right here, you have to go back at least one, two, three, four times. So usually if you, if you do this seven times, normally that will bring you all the way back to the root of the file system. This is where you're trying to get to. Um, so really, I could just keep going with this if I wanted to. I could... I could add more dot dot slashes, as many as I want, because here's the reason why. I'll show you. Oops. Get out of insert mode here. If I pull up a terminal, right, and right now I'm in my home directory, you know, obviously if I go back to, that's going to bring me to the root of the file system, right? However, let's go back here. I could also just keep going with this as many times as I wanted to. Like so, right? And I'm still here. Because if you're in the root of the file system and you go back, you're still in the root of the file system. So that's why you can, uh, you know, normally seven times, seven dot dot slashes is normally enough to get you back. But if you're really far down in, uh, in like if in the on the web server, if, if there's just so many subfolders, you might need to uh, to do a lot of dot dot slashes to get all the way back. And the reason you want to get to the root of the file system is from here. If we do an ls, we we see there's a there's Etsy, so we can get into Etsy, and then of course you can uh, get to the password file as well, or whatever file it is you're trying to get to. This is just the proof of concept normally. You start here, and then you can start looking for specific files or, uh, on the system, on the file system, right? But obviously, if you can get the web server to show you the Etsy password file, which it should have read access to, um, well, then you've proven that you're able to use LFI in order to read files on the file system that you shouldn't be able to. So... This is like your proof of concept thing here. Normally, I just go down for like a few of these, and it's normally good enough. There might be times where you need to go back even further. Uh, now, with Windows, uh, they have a different file system structure, you know, obviously. Uh, but um, you, you do use the forward slashes because the uh, actual, uh, what is the web server itself, is going to accept the forward slashes. So if it's like an IIS server, you know, you're still going to use the forward slashes as opposed to the traditional Windows backslashes because you're doing this within the context of the web server. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, but yeah, basically similar concept. You just keep going back, 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 maybe about seven times or so. And then you can go, uh, you can look at like the Etsy host file as a proof of concept, which is under Windows System 32, Drivers, Etsy, Hosts. And... Uh, once you're able to prove the, the proof of concept that uh, you're able to exploit this, then you can start looking at specific files, maybe looking at some uh, configuration files and, and possibly pulling some passwords out of that, things of that nature. One thing I will mention is very relevant for CTFs and OSCP and stuff like that, and the real world as well, I suppose, is that if you have file upload through, you know, 
maybe SMTP or whatever means you're able to upload uh, files to the system and you're able to upload and exploit. If you have uh, an LFI vulnerability, well, now you have a shell. So you can combine LFI with other vulnerabilities to actually get code execution. Um, so like I said, if you're able to upload, you know, say a PHP shell or something like that, you can use LFI to, uh, you know, go to wherever that PHP script that you uploaded is stored on the server and you can run it using the LFI. You can have the server actually execute that file, right? Because when it's reading the file, it's actually executing the file. Uh, in the case of Etsy password and the host file, that's just a text file, right? So you're just reading uh, the data on the screen. But if, there, if it's running some kind of this is where it depends on what is the technology of the server, right? If it's a PHP server, then a uh, PHP exploit uh, will be executed as PHP code, and you can use that to get your shell. So that is a very important thing to know. It's not just about reading reading uh, files on the on this file system and finding passwords. I mean. Certainly, that's something you'll come across in CTFs, but another thing you'll come across is you're able to upload a file through some other means. Now you can actually execute that file and get your code execution. So uh, some additional information here. Here's a little example that I provided. This is not a real website, so don't try to go and test this, but uh, this is just an artificial one that I came up with. This is the type of stuff you would look for because it's very easy to overlook an LFI vulnerability, but uh, definitely don't forget to test for this. You'll find it a lot, especially on OSCP and CTFs, but also in the real world, sometimes you'll see it as well. What you want to look for is pay particular attention to uh, parameters in uh, in these uh in the URLs, like URL parameters. Like in this case, there's a URL parameter called ID. And uh, basically, you would expect to see just ID equals generated reports. I tacked on this LFI payload onto the end of that, and I was able to read the flag on, on this particular CTF. Um, and I modified the host name to not dox anything, but uh, but this is the type of stuff you would look for, right? If there's like some kind of URL parameter, uh, you can try tacking on a, an LFI payload on that a lot of times. And uh, here's, a, here's a little bonus for you, some of this stuff here. Uh, these Windows files were the ones that I found to be the most useful. Like if you do, if you are able to uh, determine that the, the Windows server is... Uh, web server is vulnerable to LFI, then these are the Windows files that I've found to be some of the most lucrative, I guess we should say. Now, there's a whole cheat sheet here, which I can show you guys. If I, uh, I'll show this tool in a minute. But uh, I guess it didn't copy properly. Let's just go back here really quick. And I think we can actually click on it. Yeah, there we go. So, this is kind of a dated article at this point, but uh, you have this whole cheat sheet here and uh, it will give you uh, some some good file disclosure stuff you can look for, certain files that are are pretty good when you're dealing with different technologies. Like that's another thing that it matters. Like if, if you're dealing with say MySQL, there's certain uh, MySQL log files and stuff where you're likely to find some juicy like credentials and stuff like that. Uh, it really depends on the technology uh, if you're looking at, for example, uh, and even some generic Windows files are really good, like users, administrator, ntuser.dat, and uh, a few different payload uh, encoding stuff that you can try out as well. So definitely something to take a look at. This one is old. Now, at the time, uh, this was 2018 when I when I first made these notes. So this may or may not be uh, the way to go. There's probably newer tools. But uh, here's one that uh, I had looked at in the past called LFI Suite um, by Desmond142 on GitHub. And basically, it's an automated tool that you can use to scan and exploit LFIs. But uh, to be honest with you, what you need to know for OSCP, you know, that's the name of this video here, uh, just, just this stuff alone will get you really far. Uh, normally, from my experience, far, as far as I needed to go, and then... Uh, from there, just looking at specific files that uh, are normally pretty, 
pretty good. And a lot of it depends on what technology is running. For example, if you have a particular CMS uh, on the website, there might be good files in there that normally house uh, login credentials and stuff like that you could look for. That's just a little example for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you guys have my notes uh, that I just gave out the other day, my OSCP pen testing notes that I uh, have released for absolute free, a culmination of five years in the field. Uh, if you have that, you'll see that um, this information that I provided you here is a part of those notes. And uh, if you haven't gotten them already, like I said, absolutely for free, uh, check the link in the description of this video and uh, I can uh, email them to you. And then you'll have, you'll have not only notes on LFI, but much, much more uh, as well. And if you enjoyed this video on LFIs, uh, I have an entire playlist called What You Need to Know for OSCP. Go over here and uh, check that out. There will be uh, a number of different uh, topics, uh, what you need to know for OSCP distilled down for you. So thanks for watching, and I will see you guys right over there.